Hey guys, welcome to my shed. I am in the middle of a bunch of stuff here. The first thing I'm trying to do is rearrange some things, take inventory, put a couple care packages together. You can bet I'm going to have a contest pretty soon where I'm going to throw a bunch of things that I've grown out of that would be better for somebody that's just starting out with cigar box guitars or something like that. So we'll, we'll have some kind of a mind-twisting quiz or something like that. It might actually be something about the myriad of things that's going to happen in this episode but back to my shed I or shop whatever you want to call it I am going to do a series of episodes about the tools and the different equipment I have and how it can help you out and I hope you'll find that interesting but we are about ready to kick off a kit guitar from my friends at Guitar Kit World now these people don't pay me anything uh, they don't sponsor my channel, but they are my friends, and you're fixing to find out a reason why they are my friends. So let's take a look at this nice neck. We've been through enough of their kits to know that these things come in ready with a beefy neck and a body that goes with it. Now, we've seen one of these before, but the polar opposite of this guitar. And why it's the polar opposite is because it is a Gibson ES-175 style body with a Florentine cutaway. What does Florentine cutaway mean? Well, you all know the Texas Junk Pile. It has a Florentine cutaway. Um, you know what? I think I'll give you a link to an episode about this guitar right up there right about now the Texas Junk Pile. Now we did another guitar like this called the Mississippi Mudslide and it had a Florentine cutaway just like this and we're going to talk about that guitar here in a little bit. I've got an update for you. Let me grab a hold of this body. Do you see anything different here? This is a right-handed guitar this is a left-handed guitar. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, as usual, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to talk about cutaways first. Cutaways are cool because when you want to start playing on the lower frets down here, these cutaways allow you to do this instead of dropping down like this, especially with a slider with your fingers. When you're running a slide, the more it tilts, the odder the, the sounds get. That can work out great for you if you're on the house and you listen to the same song 30 different times and hear 30 different versions from this going on. But you can see that the cutaway lets you drop down into here. Now you either like this kind of cutaway or, here we go, this is a Harmony Brilliant H1310 model, which is kind of a knockoff. Gibson Super 400, it has a single cutaway, but it doesn't come to that peak like a Florentine cutaway. So know your cutaways, but the whole idea is you can drop down and access the lower, higher, whatever you want to call it, the frets that are closer to the bridge much easier with a cutaway. You're going to see this guitar in an episode fairly soon. Okay, so where were we? Back to left-handed and right-handed guitars. Now, anybody that's seen Tammy, my daughter, and we're going to talk about her in a minute here, play on this channel, has figured out that she plays left-handed. So, this guitar is actually going to be for Tammy. Tammy's going to have her own left-handed guitar, and it will be kind of a match to the Mississippi Mudslide that I sent out, which Wendy Jean Garrison has now in Mississippi, and we're going to cover all that in a second. But you'll see Tammy playing left-handed. We'll put this cutaway up here, and because the guitar is strung up for a right-handed person, you're actually hearing everything upside down. Now, there was a person named Elizabeth Cotton, C-O-T-T-E-N, and you've heard the term cotton picking. That's not about picking cotton. It's about Elizabeth Cotton, who learned how to play a right-handed guitar 
upside down. So the strings are upside down. So if you listen to Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cotton basic strumming and you listen to what Tammy's playing, you're going to hear the same thing. So my friends at Guitar Kit World and I had a little chat and it was time that Tammy has her own ES-175 style because she points at guitars and she really liked the Mississippi mudslide. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Tammy. You notice I have a shirt on that says CDLS. That's Cornelia DeLange Syndrome. And today, May 14th, is Cornelia DeLange Syndrome Awareness Day. What is Cornelia DeLange Syndrome? Well, it's a spontaneous genetic issue that affects between, they estimate, 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 50,000 births. So if you live in a town of a quarter of a million people, there might be five people in town that have some form of it. Um, the, the manifestations are typically, you have a person that's of smaller stature, um, you may be missing digits, you may be cognitively impaired, typically there's some type of speech issue. Tammy has never said a word. We have supported her sign language, um, and that puts kids that have this in kind of an odd space because typically they can hear. They may have some auditory processing delay, so if I say something, it takes them a little while everything to hook up. And I mean, most teenagers, they can't, or they, at least they pretend they can't hear anything an adult says, so we're kind of used to that anyway. But all joking aside, Tammy is nonverbal. A lot of the people that have Cornelia DeLange syndrome are nonverbal. Um, and when you're nonverbal, your communication from others tends to be structured in a way that they want responses from you that allow them to make decisions. So they tend to be the very basic communications. I'm hungry. I'm uncomfortable. I need to go to the restroom. Imagine if your life was communication, nothing, about nothing conceptual. It was all contextual. It was all like parrots. Now, people have worked with Tammy to get uh, a device. So imagine I'm talking to you like this, and you want to participate with me conceptually. That means what you are saying is coming out to me in a way where there's a two-way street and not me barking orders or checking off your basic human needs. So imagine you're sitting there with some kind of a computer program and you are typing in things that the computer is going to say to me and while you're typing it in I've already went through five or six sentences so it's easy for these kids to get displaced from a communication aspect. Next thing, if you're not verbal and many of these kids have fingers missing or partial, or they have gross or fine motor skill issues. So if you're signing, even people that are fluent in sign language may not understand what you're saying. So communication is a really, really big issue with these kids. Communication issues are widespread. I sit on a school board. I see kids coming in get, getting speech language pathology, pathology services that are going to help them, but there's a lot of people who go into adulthood afraid to communicate what they're thinking for fear that they might not say it right. We need to put those kind of issues away. Now, back to Tammy's story. There is, was a time, I want you to remember, if you are going to display your cognitive ability and they have some standard testing that you do that with, you can't talk. You're signing. No one around you understands your signing. Another problem with signing, if you can hear, is qual qualifications to receive uh, deaf services usually mean you're deaf. So kids that can hear but can't talk, they're kind of in another zone and they don't always get those services. But I was told by an individual that Tammy's cognitive level was about this level when she was five years old. Um, and it was very low. And I knew better because the way she responded to music told me 
she has some comprehension of B, which is math. If you can predict when something is going to happen, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you have some cognitive ability when it relates to math. In the area or the level they were describing, Tammy, it was far lower than what I knew to be true. So I don't know if y'all knew this, but I started building these guitars because I wanted to put something in Tammy's hands that she could play and do something else at the same time, which shows cognitive capacity outside of a focus on one issue. So what I did was I built this guitar. This is the very first guitar I built. It is modeled after a C6 Steve uh, video in which I saw a guitar that looked something like this. It was called Don't Know Why She Loved Me, But She Do. I'll give you a link to it right up there, right about now. And I built a stomp box. And I sat Tammy in a chair to where she could reach the stomp box, put the guitar in her hands, and I filmed what I saw and you're going to see that moment right up there, right about now. And I knew right then that it was my job to speak for people who can't speak. So any of you that watch my channel, this is really what's all behind the jokes and the comedy. This is real. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, this guitar is signed by six, C6 Steve and his drummer, Dan Magnuson, and it is a prized possession in our family. This is where it all started. Once Tammy was able to get her story out about there, uh, about her ability to communicate through music, there are some blues artists that know this story, and I've got a lot of guitars out there every night that go out and tell Tammy's story through the noises you hear coming across strings. Now, I want to tell you another story, and we're going to get an update on the Mississippi Mudslide, which was the kit guitar, if you remember. Um, let me give you another link. Wait till the end of the movie, and you'll see um, different links coming up. But anywhere where there's an eye popping up when you hover your mouse up there, you'll see it. I did a start to build, finish build playlist on this, and it went out to Wendy Jean Garrison in Mississippi. So let's talk a little bit about Wendy Jean. She is a person that's had a dynamic impact on those around her as well and it all goes back to the same issue, speech. Now my guitars, they tend to end up in the hands of people who play hill country blues and delta blues and trashy slide guitar blues. Now when I am doing my episodes I look for background music so uh, you're not getting noises of drills and machines and me droning on and on while I'm doing the tasks about putting a guitar together. So I'll spot people, or better yet, Tammy will, on her device, it'll pull up YouTube videos, and because she watches slide guitar music, um, it'll pop up suggestions, and I'll find people that have uh, music that I think would be good in the background, and they're they're... People are typically have day jobs and things like that. So I'll, I'll contact them and kind of explain what's going on and ask them, can you send me, I call it porch music, Mississippi porch music. So you're sitting out there at night, the crickets and everything are out there and it is what it is. Um, and that's how I found Wendy Jean Garrison. Now, the more I learned about Wendy Jean, the more I knew or found out that Wendy Jean has a speech issue herself and she can play great blues music, but you don't hear her singing. And the slide is what's doing the singing for Wendy Jean. It comes out, comes out that Wendy Jean has spasmodic dysphonia, spasmodic dysphonia, which is kind of, I don't know if you know what speech apraxia is or things like that, but it takes a lot of things, breath, muscles, brain, everything to speak and singing and tone and everything like that. It takes a lot of things to line up. And Wendy Jean told me I not only have this condition, but she's very active in the spasmodic dysphonia 
foundation in support of people who have this. The last thing I want to know is that somebody is afraid or embarrassed to tell me what they know. Think about this. Whether it's going back to your teacher or your coworker or someone who taught you how to do everything you know how to do. What part of your life and your experience and your ability to make a living, to know anything, didn't come from another human being? Imagine it's just you having to fend for yourself all over the place. It doesn't work that way. So people speaking to you and being able to do that with confidence is really, really important to me. Now, I sent, I knew the minute that I had talked to Wendy Jean, she didn't know it, but when I was building the Mississippi mudslide, you'll find out in the episode where I was talking about theming, I'll give you a link to it right up there, the background music of that episode is Wendy Jean. And um, I knew right then she was going to get the guitar. Uh, she didn't know it for a while, but anyway, she got the guitar. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, at about an eight and a half minute clip where Wendy Jean gets the guitar, talks about the guitar, and plays it, and then tells you a little bit about spasmodic dysphonia. Spasmodic dysphonia. I said it. Um, at the end of the episode, you're going to go down below in the resources section. You're going to look at where Wendy Jean's music is. You're going to love it. And then you're going to look at these different foundations. You're going to pick one. If you got a dollar, that's great. Um, just do something to help somebody that either A, doesn't even know they have this, or in the case of something like Wendy Jean is supporting something that will help a foundation that helps people have enough confidence to be able to communicate to their full potential. So let's go visit Wendy Jean. I'll see you at the end. Oh, this is really unbelievable. Look at this. It's got a Mississippi license plate. And then it has all these, um, what are they, matchbooks? Like it's got from um, Holly Springs Motel, Holly Springs, Mississippi, Triple A. It's got something from Vicksburg. It's got um, Chevrolet. It has um, Evangeline Restaurant. Mississippi welcomes you. <laughs> this is just an absolute work of art. Okay, and all these features are done so carefully with the same colors. And um, yeah, this is where I think that's the coin from Parchman. Wow.
I started learning to play slide guitar about 35 years ago when I first made Mississippi my home. And then 25 years ago, I started playing with local bands and solo uh, around Oxford, also North Mississippi and further away, but mostly locally in Oxford. And um, so I've been doing that for a long time. And these last couple of years, I've found that I really enjoy recording, making up instrumental uh, slide guitar soundtracks, and I'm also trying my hand at songwriting, so I'm enjoying doing all of those things, and I have a couple very special gigs that I really want to do, even though I'm cutting back, I have a few coming up that are really neat, and one of them is I'll be working with children, that is grade school age children at the University of Mississippi's summer school, sort of summer camp, so looking forward to that. Then I'll be also, for the first time, being involved in the R.L. Voice Picnic, which is straightaway Hill Country Blues in Como, Mississippi. So though I've been to it before, I'm really looking forward to being part of it this year. And then I have a couple other things coming up. One is at um, the Czech Chuma Swamp Lee Tart Nature Preserve in Grenada, Mississippi. And they are all about nature, preservation, and educating people about conservation. So I've done many things with them, and I'm looking forward to doing something additional this year. So getting this guitar was a total surprise. I'd sort of been watching Ken as he, you know, used Mississippi River water to make the stain and California oak tree galls, G-A-L-L-S, also to make the stain and putting all the special parts in there, including a uh, coin from Parchman Penitentiary. And then on the back of it, of course, has Tammy's signature. And Tammy is the reason I think that Ken uh, got into guitar making in the first place. So all these special things 
uh, just are are so one of a kind. And then I, I only re recently realized that the guitar was coming my way. <laughs> so it's it's a real surprise. It's just one of those lucky, fortunate things sometimes that, that happen. Uh, so thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. All right. Wasn't that cool? Thank you, Wendy Jean. Don't forget to go down below and see what's going on down there. Uh, get a hold of one of Wendy Jean's CDs and see what you can do for either Cornelia DeLange uh, Syndrome Foundation or Spasmodic Dysphonia Foundation or both, better yet. You, you, know, you all know that when the lights go out and you get up there, you're going to be able to say, hey, 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 uh, yeah, I, I gave, I did something, and, and it's going to work out for you. Anyway, we're going to go into the future episodes pretty soon, and you're going to see guitar come together called Lefty. It's going to be built for Tammy, and then we can all do what she's had to do and get it and play it upside down and, <laughs> and struggle through life. Hey, guys, this episode has been really, really important to me, and I want to take you in the end to a video that Margaret Garrett did for us when she was playing one of my cigar box guitars that tells the story of Tammy to music. Thanks. Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you later. Thanks for helping us out here. So a year and a half ago, this guy Ken wrote to me out of the blue and said, uh, my daughter Tammy really loves your music, and would you like a cigar box guitar? He kind of custom makes this guitar. He used a Mr. Airplane Man poster on the front and on the back. Um, and this itself is just a cigar box, you know? And he found like these matchbooks from this camp that Tara and I met, Wakila Camp. The first place we played in LA was Spaceland, so he got that. And um, the reason that he made it is because his daughter Tammy was born with this condition that renders her nonverbal. But she loves music, she loves slide guitar blues. I think for her, like music is just this way to, you know, express herself. And so Ken, in a way, helps connect his daughter to the music she loves by making these guitars. It's kind of her, her way of, it's like we, we speak for her through our guitar. Thank you.